the agenda. For oh, sure. I just want to quickly uh, go through the agenda as we've... No, I was looking for the agenda. Okay. Not the... Not the You had it as a hyperlink. Yeah, I did, but I, I can't find it now. One of them is like this. Well, let me go through it on a, on a description basis. Lost it. Um, to find, we're, we're going to describe, first of all, what a CAFO is and what's being proposed uh, for the CAFO up the road. We're also going to go through some Rome demographics and socioeconomic uh, considerations um, that, that have been, uh, in, in essence, the letter that was sent down to Madison some months ago by the town of Rome. We're going to look at existing science regarding our soil, groundwater, and surface water, and that's what George Kraft is going to bring to us. Right. Very good. Current state of the uh, lakes in the town of Rome. What is a normal pointer? <laughs> Current state of the lakes. Uh, environmental impact. So we'll talk about the, the DNR process that it goes through and has been going through to this point to make that uh, to make the, the process for, for approving or not approving this uh, CAFO. Legislative action which will be from uh, Scott Crew. Potential local impacts from Don Eastead. Uh, the role presentation, this is a presentation that's been done prior by some of the Rome town board members uh, talking about what's happening with the town of Rome in general and how this fits in with that. Pete and Well and Castle Rock uh, story by uh, Rick Jorgensen to give us a sense for other groups and what they've done to address similar kinds of problems. And then the power of citizens working together with Steve Rat, followed by questions and answers. Okay, let's go back to what's a CAFO? Concentrated animal feeding operation. It could be a number of different animal types. Uh, we're concerned about the cows. This is a large dairy capital being proposed with Golden Sands Dairy. Uh, you need to have at least 700 uh, cows to be a capital. And when you're a capital, then you get uh, regulated by both the federal government as well as the state government. The herd size is related to the capability to spread manure. In other words, if you decide you're going to have 2,000 cows and you've got 29 acres, you're not going to be able to have a calf home because they're not going to allow it because you haven't got enough room to spread the manure. So there's a relation there between the amount of land and the amount of animals you can do. There are over 200 calfos currently in the state of Wisconsin. Primarily they're dairy. And primarily they are dairy in the country. You don't find them in a situation that's similar to what we're faced with where you have a, a residential community called Saratoga and a residential community called Rome going on. Um, and, and in between those two is the proposed location of the CAFO. That is not normal by any means. <coughs> next slide. So what's being proposed next door? First of all, there's 7,000, almost 8,000 acres of land. Uh, they're going to cut a, about 4,600 of that is treed. They're going to clear cut that to dig it up to, to plant crops. So they have about 6,400 acres in crops. That's that number plus others that's already been cleared. Now, let's do a little uh, look at our little uh, graph I want to show you. It's a graphic. This shows, this was turned in by the people who are developing the, the capital. This shows the land, there, there are 6,400 acres that they're going to cultivate to grow crops all over. Each one of these is centered by a small dot and that's a high capacity well. So you're going to have wells in all these plots of land. And you can see that they're somewhat curved on the edges. 
That's because generally they're going to be sprinkling these things through an automated sprinkling system that sprays through the air. Now this is Highway 13, up and down. This is the, the border for the town of Rome, as well as the border for Adams County. So this is the land that they plan to do. There is the location of the actual dairy itself. So here's Highway 13. There's the dairy location. The rest of this is the land they plan on cultivating. These blue squares, they also own those and they will have that for future possible growth uh, and, and possible farming to raise crops on those. Which leads you to believe if they can take this amount of land and have 5,500 animals, how many animals can you get if you cultivate all of this land? Uh, if you're familiar at all with New Chester, which is south of here by about 35 miles, New, New Chester has a capital which was formed with uh, something around 5,000 cows, and within two years doubled the size of 10,000 cows. So that's what is potential, I would imagine. The other thing you should know is this land down here that's now in Rome has been owned by Plum Creek. Plum Creek really sold, recently sold this land to a, a land owner company in Georgia. The company has one objective, and that's to sell this land at a profit. And one of the things they like to be able to do is to sell it for agriculture. What they have found out by talking to the city officials here in the town of Rome is that it's zoned forest recreational and is not allowed to be used for that purpose for farming. However, there's a couple of things to think about. One is, um, is it possible that at some point they may take it to court and say they own 700 acres, for example, and they want to use it for something other than forest recreational, and will the court say the town of Rome is forced to now deal with them in, in allowing them to use their land a little bit more the way they want to? That's got potential. The other thing is, one never knows what the legislature may decide to do and change the laws and all of a sudden what the town of Rome thought they had control of, they don't have control of. That's also possible. So, all I'm suggesting to you is that, that there's where the world is that they propose and there's also another world that we just don't know about. Next slide. So we have 5,300 dairy cows. Some of those are heifers and calves. So you get to 5,300. Uh, most of those are dairy cows that are milking cows. Along with that, there's 3,100, or excuse me, 31 high capacity wells. There's actually 33 because there's two more that will be done inside the dairy location. 1,860,000 gallons per hour that that will pump. Now in the winter time, not much pumping. In the summertime, lots of pumping. So you'll see a lot of water activity in the June, July, August, etc. time frame. Let's take a look at the other map. This one shows us where those wells are and where the current wells are in our area. This is the map that was prepared by Adams County some time ago. All the yellow dots are, are wells. This is Highway 13. This is the, the north border of the town of Rome. This is where we are in the lakes area. This is Saratoga and their wells. All the white dots that you see here are the proposed wells for the CAFO. Here is a CAFO over here, their sister operation uh, Central Sands Dairies operates over there and, and they've got wells over there but very small amount of, of residential wells versus us. When you, when you look at the, the something called the cone of, of depression, it says when you put a well in, the, it's possible that the local uh, access to water in wells could be inhibited. And so the cone depression spreads out about three miles maximum. So what you can see is these wells are here. There's a one mile mark here, there's a two mile mark here, there's a three mile mark here. Right 
through this area is the three mile mark. So you're saying all these wells are operating high capacity, there's potential for these individual wells to have some significant problems in the future. It's possible. Okay. Uh, next chart. We're back to the original chart. So there's 1,500 private drinking wells within that area of the Kona Depression. Significant issue. They will also then spread 55 million gallons of manure on the, on the crop, crop land annually. 55 million gallons annually. They'll aerial spray it, probably. Or at least they're going to aerial spray the water. They've got the capability to aerial spray the manure, the liquid manure, and they're doing that now in the one in Armenia. So my guess is they may well do that here. And, and that proto is, a, is a real health hazard. Scientists have looked at it, and there's an awful lot of pathogens, et cetera, when you start spraying this stuff across the air. One more chart. The two, the two documents that, that the DNR works with in this possible uh, approval of this capo is a discharge elimination plan where you're looking at discharge elimination, a lot to do with the local um, uh, dairy point itself. And then there's the biggest thing, which is the nutrient management plan. And that's the plan for spread, spreading 55 millions of gallons of manure over that cropland. Um, and they can, by the way, con 